Hello everyone, my name is Sergey Kovalenkov and I'm one of the founding members of US Hemp Building Association and currently holding the position of Director of Education. And today we will talk about this hempcrete house located in Ukraine. So let's come in. On this particular project we're using a double stud system. I know the lumber is expensive in North America at the moment, but this is the fastest way to erect hempcrete on site. You know, if we're not talking about prefab panels, if we're not talking about spraying system, if we're talking about particularly mixing hempcrete on site and compacting it right there. So what happens here, we have a double stud system. We have an ability to install the homework directly on the timber. So instead of having a single stud system and making sure that your homework is leveled every single time you shift it upwards, we set up uh, a timber frame perfectly vertically and then every time our workers have to shift it up, they don't have to grab a level and do it directly on the spot super fast. Another little thing right here I want to talk to you about, of course you would like to separate the, the slab from your timber so your hempcrete wouldn't be sucking up all the moisture. So you always have to have some type of membrane separating hempcrete from your foundation. Here in this climate zone we estimated that 16 inch, 40 centimeters is more than enough. Where It's a little bit of an overkill, but at the same time the uh, the, this house is going to be extremely energy efficient, extremely energy efficient. So maybe like 12 or 14 inch would be more suitable, but in this particular case, realize that 16 inch is the best thing that we can do. Also, internal partitions, 20 centimeters, so that's 8 inch. So here we have 16 inch, inside we have 8 inch thick walls. On the, on the ceiling, on the roof, we have a flat roof and it's also going to be insulated. Usually we do 12 inch thickness of the roof. In this case, the client said, I want a little bit more, so we applied 16 inch. The electrical cables are hidden inside the wall. So here you see a completed wall. So this would be the best way where you have your electrical project already uh, confirmed by the client and you know exactly where all the sockets where all the outlets are going to be and uh, you're just simply sinking it in so this is the simplest way to run all your wiring before compacting the hemp grid. so here you see uh, diagonal bracing maybe it's a little bit unnecessary but usually we have a diagonal bracing installed on the facade, on the exterior walls. This allows us not to use OSB boards in our structural uh, frame. I just want to repeat that one more time for the architects and the builders in North America. Hemp Creek houses can be built without using gypsum boards and OSB. You know, before our ancestors used to build uh, stick frame houses, with diagonal bracing system. That's as simple as that. So you don't need to use OSB, don't worry about it. Here you see an example of using coarse hemp herds. So sometimes in Ukraine we have uh, you know, problems with biomass, access to proper biomass. So we have to purchase sometimes cor coarser particles of uh, hemp herds which is not a problem for us because we're using our own binder for some of the binders that could be a problem it might seem a little bit rough but once it dries up it becomes like a stove because we will see right here there are elements of uh, hemp fiber so I, the frequent question we ask is it okay to have some fiber inside the herds yes it's fine i would say you know less than 10 percent would be good anything more you're having problems when you're mixing it, when you're compacting it. So here we see really coarse particles of hemp herds with fiber mixed with the binder. Uh, 
it's fine. It's still gonna be it's gonna be like a uh, like a concrete once it dries up. But in comparison to this wall, of course, right? This is more pleasant to work with this type of material. So as you can see, there is a big difference. But in, in the end, uh, you know, in terms of thermal performance, there is not much of a difference. So here we are on the last piece of wall that has to be insulated with hempcrete. This is an internal partition. We have a, a 20 centimeter wide timber stud. And as I told you, we installed the formwork right against the timber. So one little problem that we might have in the future is if what if what happens if we're, someone leans on, on the hempcrete wall and there is nothing to hold it together. That's why we install every two feet inside the mixture in the middle of the mixture we install this pieces of timber that holds the uh, the hempcrete wall together as you can see that piece is installed over there right in the middle of the mixture every two feet we we install it that means hempcrete is going to stay in place and it's going to be all intact compaction happens all around because it's a single wall this is not a, an exterior wall it's quite it's quite thin So I just want to show you how quickly the process happens. So first we add hemp into the mixer, then we add some water to it. And then we immediately add the binder. So the whole process takes less than a minute. This is what's important to understand. You put the put the hemp in, put the water in, put the put the binder in, and it takes a minute to mix and prepare your mix, uh, prepare your hemp with mix. So now you understand why we have this double stud system. You know, so this type of mixing and this type of uh, this type of uh, timber frame erection allows us to complete the project extremely fast. Now the thing about this binder, it allows us to remove the formwork instantly right after we apply the hemp and I'm going to show you to right now. So now you've seen that the process takes up a, a little more than a minute. Uh, the mix is ready, we know it's sticky, so that's what allows us to remove the formwork instantly after compacting hempcrete. can see the worker can really do it quickly by compacting it only on the edges leaving the metal lightly compacted. The process doesn't take a lot of time and even children can learn how to mix and uh, compact femcrete within a day. So let's talk a little bit about finishing right now. So it's important to understand that, uh, of course, you would like to hide your timber inside your hempcrete. Here is not the case because some of these walls are going to be covered with timber cladding. So you need this visual stud to see where you're going to uh, get your screws in, right? But it's fine to apply the plaster. The plaster, of course, has to be all natural based, right? So it has to be a lime based plaster or it should be a clay plaster right so allowing the hempcrete to breathe you gotta cover it up with vapor permeable material just like clay and lime if you start applying acrylic paint on it you're in for trouble right you gotta cover it up only with vapor permeable material only 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 timber only lime or, or clay so what to do on the facade system so 
I have one little tip for the people that get in with the hemp crit late in the season. You know, so for example, it's September, October, November, December. We know that there are numerous temperature and humidity fluctuations along the winter season. You know, your, your, your temperature goes up and down, your relative humidity goes up and down every single day. So that moisture can be attracted by hempcrete and then on the, on the cold November night it can freeze, then defrost, freeze, defrost and then you can see once you come back in the springtime you'll see that the first maybe half of inch starts peeling off because you know water gets uh, increased by its volume when it's, once it freezes. So in order to avoid this problem we usually apply a rough coat of lime render in order to protect our hempcrete. And after this, as you can see, now we have our, uh, our timber studs right here. We can apply a wet facade system. So you can just apply like some type of stucco with the, with the of course, with a mesh, or you can do a, a ventilated facade system. It's up to you. On the facade, it doesn't really matter what you do. Of course, you want to try to stay as vapor permeable as possible. So a lot of people ask me about timber. Does it have to be treated or non-treated timber? Well, I, I say it's up to you folks, but I personally wouldn't do it. Sometimes uh, you have to do it, you know, in order to protect the timber frame because you don't know how long your construction is going to go for. Uh, but I can tell you one thing, your timber frame is going to be covered by your hempcrete with tons of lime in it. And lime is a great antiseptic material with a high pH level, 12.4 out of 14 possible, right? So it's extremely alkaline material that's gonna protect it from the insects, from fire, from rodent. This timber is gonna be in perfect shape even 50, 60 years from now. So a couple of words about the foundation. You know, for Hemp Creek House, you can have a strip footing, you can have a a, a, a slab foundation, you can have a pile foundation, uh, so it doesn't really matter. As long as you separate hempcrete from your, from your slab, everything will be fine. You know, here you have a, you have a slab foundation with the extruded polystyrene uh, acting as a formwork for, for, for your concrete slab where we install the uh, floor heating system. In terms of the timber, it could be, uh, you know, in North America you have an excellent different type of timber. Here we have used pine, but it doesn't really matter what type of timber you're going to use because hempcrete is going to suck up all the moisture and eventually the timber frame will petrify once it's surrounded by hempcrete mix. So what about the windows and doors? As you can see, we have plenty of timber to play around with in order to install our frame for our window. So it's not really a problem ever on the hempcrete construction site. welded on to the main bar and once it starts turning it lifts up hempcrete and uniformly covers all the hempcrete with lime. So right now the installation of the roof is taking place and as you can see it's going to be a flat roof and the complexity about this project is that the hempcrete is going to be hanging from the top and it's going to be visible inside the house. So it's going to be a flat roof, flat ceiling with hempcrete exposed in squares. So 
we gotta make sure we compact the hemp crate really hard right now we're gonna climb up and I'll show you how we do it in order for the in order for the insulation to cover up the roof truss and at the same time not to fall through so here is our roof truss exposed so this first 25 centimeters of highly compact hemp crate has to go over the bottom of the roof truss and it has to grab onto it in order not to fall through. All the metal plates are painted prior to hemp crate insulation and all our electrical wiring uh, is installed on top of this highly first uh, 25 centimeters highly compact hemp crate and then covered up by 15 centimeters of loose hemp crate and it's going to be protected perfectly. Now on the roof we're gonna have our OSB installed onto the roof truss system and then we're gonna have a, a hydrophobic membrane uh, installed after that. So if you have a gable roof, usually it's a bitumen shingles or maybe metal or maybe some type of uh, uh, complex expensive clay type of uh, roof covering. But in this case, the most, the cheapest way to do it and the most practical one is a hydrophobic membrane. So this house is gonna be in perfect shape. Here you see OSB screwed in directly to the roof truss system and then this timber lads are holding it together so the OSB does not bend in once the workers are compacting the hemp crate. So this is a temporary foam work and it's going to be removed and then the hemp crate is going to be exposed. It's going to be a very beautiful project but complex. Here as you can see all the interior partitions are done with hemp crate. Here we still have a temporary form of still holding on. The guys just finished, I think, a few days ago. So the entire house is all going to be hemp created with all natural, local material. This is what we are striving for. You know, we would love to use local hemp in all over the world. All the projects that we're getting involved in always motivate people to source it locally. Uh, no matter how expensive it is because you're supporting the local economy, you're supporting that business which is not an easy one. Ask anyone who is processing hemp right now around the world. It's a complex uh, process and an expensive one and people still figuring stuff out as we go along. So to sum it all up, uh, the foundation for hemp free cars, it can be any type of foundation. It can be a concrete pile foundation, it can be metal pile foundation, it can be a strip footing, it can be a, uh, a slab with a, a water heating system already installed just like in this case, right? And make sure your timber frame is separated from your foundation so the moisture is not absorbed by hempcrete and constantly being dragged by it from the foundation so make sure you're gonna have like a bitumen uh, hydrophobic uh, membrane installed in between your timber frame, hemp frame and, uh, and your footing and then you just uh, go upwards and try to uh, insulate your house in spiral this is how we do it you know in order to speed things up like I've explained already we use a double stud system I know the pricing for timber is going up at this moment so maybe uh, we have to reconsider the way we erect house but if you want to really uh, uh, speed things up in terms of hemp rate installation this is what I suggest you do. you have your double stud system you install your forework directly onto your studs and this way uh, you do it as fast as possible.